Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest tutorial from Just The Basics. In today's video, we're going to look at one method to create rocky surfaces inside of Blender in a matter of minutes. This is an update on a tutorial I did about a year and a half ago. Some of the comments kindly reminded me that it was rather out of date as it had been recorded in Blender version 2.79. So today we're going to jump in and look at three main areas of animation that is sculpting, texturing and lighting. We're also going to be using several websites to access some resources that are free to download in CC0. That means you can use them in your project because they're royalty free. This is a slightly more advanced tutorial just so we can keep the pace and keep the video nice and short. Let's jump straight in. We're going to want to make sure we're using Blender version 2.83 and we're in the render engine cycles. Let's go ahead and get our assets now that we're going to need. First up, we're going to need to go to blendswap.com. Here, we'll be able to download a nice pack of Photoscanned Rock brushes. So if you don't have an account with them already, it's free to create one and free to download. So go ahead and do that, and then we can go to the search bar and search Rock Brush. This will bring up several items, but the one we're interested in is the first one, Rock Brushes Photoscanned. And you can see this is under CC0 license, which means we're able to use it in our own projects. So go ahead and download that. Make sure to give a big shout out or a thanks in the comments to the creator Rubber Duck as this is a fantastic asset and would have taken a lot of time. Once you've downloaded that, make sure to save it in a location you can access easily for later on. The next thing we're going to need is some materials. So the website I'm using for this is 3dassets.1, formerly textures.1 as it kindly reminds you on its site. Now I'm going to just search rock and this will bring up a lot of variety of textures and 3D models. But what I'm interested in is a texture. So I have a look until I see one I like. And I think this Rock 038 looks pretty cool. So I'm going to download that. And once again, download it and save it in a location that you'll be able to access easily. I've already downloaded this, so I won't need to download it again. And of course, you can select any material that appeals to your eye. Finally, the last thing we'll need is a HDRI image. We can go to our third and final website, which is HDRI Haven. Once again, another 100% free CC0 website where we can look under the HDRI gallery and select one that will match our project. The one I'm using is called Sprout Sunrise. If you go to Sunrise Sunset, it'll come up. I'm using the 4K edition. Make sure to download and save it in a location you can access easily. And then we're ready to start. Jumping back into Blender, let's delete the default cube and instead add in a plane. We can rotate this to stand up so can, we can imagine it's like a cave wall. And I'm going to scale it up three times by hitting S3 and then enter. I'm just going to hit G to grab and Z for the Z axis to bring it up. The first thing we're going to need to do is add some sculpting detail. To do this, we currently have to add some more resolution to our plane as it's only got one face currently. We can go to our modifiers tab, which is signified by this spanner and add a modifier. The modifier we're going to add today is a multi-resolution one. And we're going to change it from Catmull Clark to Simple so it doesn't deform the shape. Now I'm going to subdivide this about nine times. But if your workstation doesn't run very smoothly with that, you can do a lower number like seven or eight. Once we've done that, let's jump into the Sculpting tab. And the first thing we need to do is import those brushes that we downloaded from BlendSwap.com. To do this, we're going to go File, Append and navigate to where we saved that folder. Once we've loaded it up, you will see the rock underscore brushes dot blend file. And if we double click on this, it'll bring up the internal files inside of that. We're interested in the brush folder. If we go into there, we can hit A to select all those brushes and click append to import them into our project. Now, by clicking this thumbnail here, it'll bring up all the brushes we've just imported. We can select any one we'd like to use. I might just pick a random one, maybe Rock Brush 32 to start off. The next thing we're going to need to do is hit N to bring up our right hand side toolbar and go down to Tool. So this is where we'll find all the options for controlling our sculpting brush. Well, most of them at least. And under Symmetry, I'm just going to turn off mirroring on the X because I don't want to do any mirroring with this sculpt brush. Now that I've done that, if I right click, I can bring up my Radius and Strength settings. So if I bring my Radius up, it increases the size of my sculpting brush and then the strength increases the strength of it. So if I click and drag now, you can see it's sculpting this rock surface onto my mesh. And I might mix it up by grabbing a few different faces, make it something interesting, and we'll go for creating a kind of cave wall with this first demonstration. And you can see 
within a matter of seconds, we've already got something that's looking pretty cool. But it still looks like clay. So let's go ahead and add in some textures. To do that, I'm going to go back to the layout panel and just split this view in half. I'm going to go and drag and split it down in half again. If you're not sure how to do that, just wait till you see this crosshair in the top left hand corner and then click and drag either to the right or down. This top editor type, I'm going to change from being 3D viewport to shader editor and the bottom from 3D viewport to UV editor. And I'll just hit N in the shader editor to remove that top right hand side toolbar and go ahead and add a new material. We'll just make sure we've got our plane selected as well. And let's go ahead and hit Shift A and drop in some image textures. We can duplicate these a couple of times as we're going to need four image textures for what we're doing today. The fourth and final one would just drop in front of our principled shader as we're not going to use that just yet. Now let's connect these up. We'll drop color to base color. The second image texture will go into our roughness value and the third and final will go into our normal map. Let's hit Shift A and add in a normal map node as well to drop in between the final bottom one just so the computer can understand how to interpret that normal map. Let's load up our texture we've saved. So go to wherever you saved it on your computer and the top one, we're going to drop in our color or diffuse image. The second one will drop in our glossy or roughness map. And the third one will drop in our normal map. Now for the first one, the color space is automatically set to sRGB, which is fine because we want that to control the color of our material. But for the bottom two, we want the color space to be set to non-color so it doesn't affect the color and the computer can read those image textures correctly. Now that we've done that, if we switch to rendered view, you'll see that our material is showing up nicely. If we wanted to rotate that, we could hit tab to enter edit mode and then hovering over our UV editor, just hit A until our selection appears orange, knowing that we've selected our entire mesh and we can hit R to rotate it however we'd like. I'm going to hit 90 and enter to rotate it 90 degrees and then hover back over this 3D viewport and tab to exit out. Now that we've done that, it's looking pretty good, but it still doesn't look quite believable. If we switch to fully rendered mode, you'll notice that our background is still rather dull as well. So let's go ahead and add in our environment texture now. To do that, under world settings, next to color, change it to environment texture. Then go ahead and open up the environment texture that we downloaded earlier. Once we've imported this in, we'll see the lighting has been applied. If you'd like to have a transparent background like I do, go to render properties and under film, just check this box next to transparent. So there we have our rocky wall, but perhaps we can squeeze a little bit more realism out of it. To do that, back in our node editor or our shader editor, let's drag this material output node out a bit more and drag and drop this final image texture into the displacement. And we'll hit shift and A and search to add in a displacement node. We'll drop this in between the two as this is going to help us or allow us to control the displacement of this. Now let's go ahead and drag this color into the actual height because we want it to affect the height of our rock wall or our image texture, I should say. Let's go ahead and click open, navigate to our folder and there should be one of the maps in there entitled displacement map or height map. Let's drag and drop that in there and make sure we set the color space to non-color. Well, still nothing's really happened. That's because there's one final setting we need to check. In our material panel, we need to scroll down till we see settings and under settings, we need to change the displacement type from bump only to displacement and bump. You'll notice something rather funky is happening. It's really displacing our material, but way too much. Let's change a couple of settings first of all. Let's change this from object space to world space. I'm not really sure what that does, but it seems to make it better. And then let's turn the scale down from 1 to 0.3. That's looking really good. So now we're getting a nice displaced wall. And that's pretty much all there is to creating this rocky effect. But perhaps we want a higher level of realism for our rocky surfaces. What I find works really well is actually using textures perhaps of higher fidelity. That may mean or require purchasing materials. But one great tool we can make use of is the Quixel Mega Scans, or that is Quixel Bridge. 
So this is a paid for subscription based texture site. I'm not sponsored by it, I should add that in. They do have fantastically high quality up to 8K textures. Now, if you don't wanna pay for textures, you can go ahead and create a free account and start a free 30 day trial without having to pay anything and get access to their free library. This has some great examples of high fidelity materials and textures that we can use. For example, I'm just gonna use one of their free textures here. So if you create an account, you can use this completely for free as well. I'll export that into this Blender project. I'll just change the material to our new Icelandic rock. Now there's a couple of things I need to change on here. I just need to change the texture coordinates automatically loaded from generated to UV so I can edit it. And I also need to add in a displacement map like we did for our other one. Once again, drag and drop that into the height. Set the scale to 0.5, change from object space to world space. And under settings, make sure we've got bump and displacement, displacement and bump. And you can see these are quite nice high resolution textures. In fact, they've got fantastic preservation of detail. I might alter the lighting and there's a really simple and easy way to do this. If we go to edit preferences and under add-ons, search node wrangler i've already got enabled but just put a checkbox next to that and then click these three lines and select save preferences we can in our shader editor change it from object mode to world mode and viewing our environment texture we've got loaded in press Control and t to add in essentially a world lighting rig well this allows us to alter or rotate the lighting so just by rotating it on the z-axis that is the vertical up and down axis. It allows me to rotate the sun around so I can get some nice lighting, some nice sharp angles with that and create some cool looking results. I really like that. And you can see here, we've got a really fantastic looking cable. Now I've just opened up a different project because there's something else I wanted to mention before finishing this tutorial. You might be desiring to use this effect and technique in one of your films or video games you're working on and perhaps your workstation doesn't handle crunching big numbers super well. What you can do then to help have a smooth workflow using this technique, in our modifier properties panel, we can just alter the amount of preview or render multi-resolution subdivisions. So for example, if we're using this asset here that I've quickly created using this effect in a game, we might be able to turn the resolution down to something rather low. For example, we'll try three. It doesn't look quite as detailed, but if we switch to rendered mode, it still preserves the detail pretty acceptably and pretty good. All right, back to the video. So this is a really simple method. It can be applied across the board. I find it's a lot of fun to easily and quickly create things like rock columns, caves, and cool looking landscapes. So let me know if you have any questions or have any problems with it. And if you like, even leave a thumbs up. Thanks everyone for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, this has been just the basics of creating Rocky services in Blender version 2.83. <gasps>